Hello, and welcome back to Warm Up for Iceborne. I'll be your host and guide, Shepard, and today we'll be taking on the Nergigante. The Nergigante is the extinction dragon who feeds on other elder dragons. His powerful attacks and regenerating spines can prove to be a challenge. Fight wisely, and you'll be rewarded with some of the best weapons and armor in the game. To fight Nergigante efficiently, you must first understand how his spines work. Nergigante starts in a normal state, when all of his scales are unbroken. After dealing enough damage, or if he does certain attacks himself like his head slam, his scales will break. After a short period of time, white spines will begin to grow out from that affected area. These can augment and improve the power of his attacks, especially when grown from his head or his right arm. Deal enough damage and you will break the white spines, causing him to trip. This is made even easier as areas affected with white spines take additional damage, making the cycle of wound, white spines, and trip an excellent cycle. It's important to note that breaking these spines while he's tripped, flinched, or otherwise stuck in an animation will not cause a trip, so consider holding off on breaking them if he's already on the ground. Take too long though, and the white spines will turn black. At this point, the part will take almost no damage, and breaking them will be nearly impossible without a large amount of bombs or true damage. After a certain amount of spines have turned black, Nergigante will roar and dive bomb you. Evade this attack however you can, as it does incredible damage. Fortunately, this attack removes all black spines from Nergigante, giving you a chance to do the cycle all over again. Facing off against Nergigante will require you to adapt based on your weapon type. Some weapons hit low or have powerful horizontal attacks, making them ideal for breaking spines on the arms. Other weapons, such as the hammer or greatsword, generally have vertical attacks, meaning that you'll want to try and target the head. The most iconic attack of Nergigante's is his headbutt. On its own, it's not very threatening, and can create large openings to attack either his hands or his head. He has spines though, he will shoot them out on completing the attack, dealing additional damage and having extra range. Be careful if his head is wounded, as he always seems to regrow spines at just the right time to throw them out at the last moment. Nergigante has a simple claw swipe if you're standing in front of him. These attacks don't deal much damage and provide a good opening to get damage in. He'll sometimes combo these into a headbutt, so be careful of it. His Insta Charge is a powerful attack that can catch anyone off guard. If you're knocked on the ground, Nergigante will fly up into the air and deal a powerful palm slam. The smart thing to do is do nothing and stay on the ground, as you'll be invincible until you stand up again. This attack can be particularly scary if his right arm has spines, as he will have a large area of effect surrounding him when he attacks with it. If you're behind Nergigante, he may try to tail slam you. He favors one side over another, so use that knowledge to stay out of the attack range. At a point during the fight, Nergigante will puff out his wings and roar. This signals that he's entered his dying state, where suddenly he'll start attacking more ferociously. Flinches may now cause him to recoil and fall off with a palm slam. Likewise, he has a very quick moving palm slam that will track you. One of the most deceptively powerful attacks is his 180 degree tail spin. He'll roar and spin 180 degrees clockwise. You can use this as an opportunity if you're on the safe side to attack him, but otherwise, make sure to get out of the way. Nergigante has a roar that can be beneficial to learn how to dodge. You'll see him really telegraph charging up his roar, and as soon as he starts to extend his head, evade. You should slip right through him. Many of his weapons require Nergigante tails to make. Unlike some other monsters, we'll have to actually cut and carve his tail to get these. Keep that in mind until you start getting investigations for them later on. Congratulations! You defeated the Nergigante! Let's head back to a stair and see what we can make.
Nearly every Nergigante weapon could be a useful alternative compared to any of the other weapons we're making so far. All of his weapons have a large amount of blue sharpness and a very high base raw attack value. While most of his weapons do eventually get beat by other types once we have a large selection of decorations and armor, they are way more than sufficient for us to take on the remainder of the game. We'll start by using Nergigante parts to upgrade our Iron Longsword to the Nurgle Reaver. This additional blue sharpness will make it a lot easier for us to continue to combo without bouncing on monsters. The Barath Club will get its final upgrade. If you find a non-elemental boost decoration, this will be one of the best raw swords and shields in the game. Nurgigante parts allow us to continue to upgrade our Diabolus Dual Blades and Hammer. The Elder Dragon Blood that drops from Nurgigante allows us to do the final upgrade on our Ore Hunting Horn. Again, there are a wide selection of horns we can use, many of which may end up dealing more damage than this one. However, the Song Selection and later access to White Sharpness on the Ore Hunting Horn make it a great choice to take into the Endgame and into Iceborne. The Iron Lance gets an upgrade with Nergigante parts, giving us much needed sharpness. Nergigante parts allow us to fully upgrade our Diablos Charge Blade, arguably one of the best Charge Blades in the game. Finally, we can upgrade our Insect Glaive into the Nergigante Path, a great route allowing us to free up our combos into more damage efficient ones. For weapons that don't use too much stamina, the Nergigante Helm can be very helpful. Maximum Might gives us bonus affinity when our stamina is full. This skill will be changed slightly when Iceborne is released, so consider wisely if you want to use your Nergigante gem early on to make it. Between the two, while the style is definitely worse, the Alpha option may be better, as it gives us one point in attack boost. If you have a build that does not require the Rathalos chest for the bow, the Beta Nergigante chest can be a good alternative to get additional stamina surge. Either option for the arm is okay, as Agitator gives us additional affinity and attack power when the monster is enraged. The Beta Tacit gives two points of attack, and is a commonly used Tacit early on in high rank, before there are better options. Finally, either choice of Greaves works, and it will mostly depend on your selection of decorations based on what you'll end up making and using. Combining three pieces of Nergigante armor together will give you the Nergigante Hunger skill, an ability that will give you small amounts of health back as you attack a monster. With Nergigante parts, we can make the Wyvern King Eye Patch. This is a very powerful headpiece that will give us two points of weakness exploit and a level 3 decoration slot, which can be very helpful for bow users, but other types as well. Well, that's it for Nergigante. Make sure to subscribe. This will be covering every monster in the game. Continuing on with the Teoster next week. Until next time, this is Shepard, saying good luck and have a good hunt.